we can move on to the next question. If okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought, I thought you go. Okay, the next, the, the next and last question then. Uh, archaeology, the topic will be archaeology in Hebrew seals, uh, which is your expertise, <laughs> the surfing and apologetics. Ben, you have okay. studied yeah. in great Hebrew seals and how they can help us understand better um, the historical and cultural context of the Old Testament. Could you talk a little bit about, about that and your work in the area? Uh, sure. So uh, this is the subject of my master's thesis right now, which I'm about to finish up. So uh, in the ancient... In the ancient uh, biblical world, we have almost no manuscripts that survive from uh, too far back, simply because they decay, they get eaten by worms. Uh, but one thing that we do have, uh, which is closely associated with manuscripts, which I've been trying to study, is uh, ancient Hebrew seals. And we actually have, we have thousands of seals from like the biblical lands, from uh, the nations surrounding Israel, from the ancient Near East. So if you remember, uh, for example... And the whole story of Joseph, there's this scene where uh, Pharaoh, he, he becomes so enamored with Joseph, he likes him so much that he decides, he, he has a ceremony and he gives Joseph his, uh, his seal ring in, in uh, the biblical text. And when he gives him the seal ring, it symbolizes like, hey, you, you have the authority of the Pharaoh now uh, because you have my ring. So that's, that's the object that I study is uh, what they would do in the ancient world, in the ancient Near East is get semi-precious stones and you would have this artisan who would carve the name of of an important official or person like within this little stone and they'd be quite small and then usually it would be accompanied with uh, some sort of art uh, very often Egyptian art and then this uh, this stone you could wear it as a necklace you could wear it as a ring you would use it to um, impress uh well i guess i should go back a little bit you, you would get a uh, like a papyrus document you would fold it up uh and then you put a clay on a uh you would fold it up tie it up and then you put a lump of clay like on the uh, tied cord and then you would press into the clay this image of your seal so now the document can't be open without breaking the seal and you know who 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 the seal belonged to the authority behind it Mm. And these little uh, these little stone seals survive pretty well, simply because they're made of stone. So we have thousands of them from the ancient Near East. So uh, the idea for my thesis was that uh, there there's been a doctoral thesis that was published a few years ago, which had this idea of let's create a ranking system where we can tell how likely it is that an inscription identifies a biblical person. So it's, it was an entire book, essentially, based on this idea of how can we develop a really philosophically sophisticated system for ranking the, rel the reliability that an inscription identifies a biblical person. So I took this guy's thesis, I applied it to the thousands of Hebrew, uh, not thousands of Hebrew seals, but uh, the uh, hundreds and hundreds of Hebrew seals that we have in order to determine, well, how many do we have that can reliably be said to identify a biblical person? And the result that I got was we have 24 artifacts that identify 15 biblical persons uh, living before the fall of the first temple. So these are people that are... Uh, but these are, these are people, not biblical characters, but uh, people who live uh, before? No, no, these are biblical characters. Okay. These are people that their names are mentioned in the Bible. Okay, like okay. We, we have their title. We know who they mm -hmm. are, which is really cool. There's a tremendous number of people that there's a very good possibility that they're mentioned in the Bible and we have their seal, but we can't establish, uh, we don't have enough criteria to establish like reliably with, uh, with certainty or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the ones that were like the most reliably, uh, established. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said, we were able to establish 15 biblical persons just from this, this little stone artifacts that we have. Okay. And uh, what you end up with is people like King Jeroboam II, uh, Uzziah, the king of Judah, Hezekiah, the king of Judah, Hilkiah, the high priest, mm. who discovered the book of Deuteronomy, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then we, we have all, all, all sorts of, because the Babylonians came through Judah uh, 
and burn everything to the ground. Mm. <laughs> they they harden all of these little clay. Uh, these documents were burned, and, and the little mm. clay seals that were attached to them were were hardened, basically like stone. So we have a tremendous number of these little clay these little uh, clay uh, seal impressions. So 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 Ben. So, so, time. so these seals. Did these people actually were wearing them, like you said, like necklace or 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 a ring? Or, you could wear them as or the necklace, ring, uh, bracelets, all sorts of way they would wear them. So, so, so this but, and, and this is also um, this is the, now you got my interest because um, th these things are actually proofs of of these historical characters. Essentially, yes, yeah. So depending on depending on how reliably you can say yes, this is this biblical person, which for some people it's it's just virtually certain because mm. you'll have like this seal belongs to uh hezekiah king of judah so it's like there's only one hezekiah king of judah in history mm. we know we got the guy all right so, so so this is uh like like how can i say like uh are you know archaeologists like Fink finkelstein and they they all put like uh they don't believe that oh this 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 thing was a made-up story or, or or were made up characters uh this this kind of throws throws his thesis to one side or... I, I don't want to like over dramatize it yeah, and say yeah, yeah, like yeah, look yeah. We, we've proven like uh, miracles in the Bible that type of thing but but what is cool is that you'll get a couple people like uh, like there's a seal the most recently discovered one it was last year and it was announced this year was one identifying guy named Nathan Melech uh, Nathan Melech was a court official uh in a biblical passage where he just gets mentioned like just barely some event happened near the room that he worked in so his name got mentioned as and this took place in this room near where he worked in and that's it and this biblical passage that he occurs in happens to be like one of the most contested uh passages in history in terms of like how many times it was edited and and like whether or not the events it records happens mm. so it's so cool that like hey now we know this guy existed we found his seal so the idea that so you could say the events recorded about him and like uh, uh, the events recorded in conjunction with him. They're probably they probably have some grain of historicity to them just because like uh, you have memory of who this odd guy was that only gets barely mentioned. Hey, where, where, so where, like, where, where is he mentioned in the Bible? I mean, uh, uh, that'll be in the in the historical books. Yeah, in, in you're talking about uh, Second uh, Kings twenty three eleven. Yes, I'm, I was getting to to ah oh, Kings, not Chronicles. Okay. Uh, okay, Second Kings, Second Kings. Uh, so, so, so only, it's only mentioned only once. Twenty three eleven. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It says, I'm reading in Spanish though, so it's because uh, because I wanted to look. Yeah. So so that's it. Second Kings twenty three eleven. That's that's the only that's. Okay, let's go back to it. So this is the only time this individual is mentioned. Yet you found the the seal. Correct. Wow. And he's not even mentioned like he's an important character. He's just like they just talk about, yes, hey, this yes event to, happened next to his room. Yeah, yeah, just to help locale, uh, just to just just to help find uh, to to give to give directions. Right, right. So you there's there's really cool like finds that surface from this. Like uh, uh, we have a seal ring. Like we still have the ring attached to this seal of uh, one of Hezekiah's sons mm -hmm. named Hanan, mm -hmm. uh, which is. You wouldn't expect archaeologically that we would find out the ring size of one of Hezekiah's sons, the guys who discovered uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Or, for example, we have a couple of these uh, clay seal impressions that were fired during the Babylonian destruction, so they're, they're rock hard, so they survive. Uh, they have little fingerprints on the edges. Mm. So we might have, it's very likely that we have the fingerprints of some, some important men in the Bible, uh, like King Jotham, for example. Fingerprints, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, the The main research question that I put behind all this is when you look at a lot of these seals, when I collected all these seals identifying biblical persons together and I looked at them, a huge amount of them had very Egyptian iconography. Mm. So, for example, uh, the Hezekiah seal, which a couple years ago was announced its discovery, and it has uh, a winged sun disk. 
which looks like uh, you know the Egyptian god Ra, and it has two Egyptian onks on the sides. Mm. Uh, we even have a couple of seal, like one seal uh, has a depiction of the god Horus, which is uh, it's really strange because he served a very uh, a pious king according to the Bible. So the question that I've been dealing with is why is it that you have all this solar iconography? You have yes. uh, Egyptian iconography on Hebrew seals of people that from history we know they were uh, pious worshipers of Yahweh. And the answer uh, that I've come to, I will go through all the arguments for it now, but the answer that I've come to is that it seems pretty clear that an ancient Israelite religion, they, they did this thing that I mentioned earlier of uh, polemical theology where uh, it was very, very common in the ancient Near East where you would take the the sun disk symbol and you would use it to represent your chief deity. So uh, Hezekiah, for example, the seal of his whole like royal administration, it's a winged sun disk. And he, he accepts this as like, look, this is a legitimate way to represent Yahweh uh, symbolically, artistically. Uh, and, and it wasn't like any sort of, uh, it wasn't perceived as any sort of like breaking of the second commandment or anything like that. Mm. Uh, even, though, even though they were trying to represent, because uh, I can remember, I mean, I used to, when I was young, I used to like Iron Maiden. <laughs> and I remember the, the, their album, Power Slave. Uh, I even went to the concert in Long Beach Arena. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so they have, they have all these... Um, this iconography from Egypt, and, and, and yes, and the sun huh. disk with and the sun disk with uh, with the rings, and and for yeah. those, and for people who are maybe more your age, uh, which is a cheaper version of it, would be like a Katy Perry um, <laughs> 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 video that that, that that was taken down or, or the song. All the that, Illuminati symbolism. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, was, uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, and, and and there's a guy who's a music. A music uh, music expert that has shown that that toot, toot, toot. again in the in, in the in this in, 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 in uh, I'm sorry to go into this thing about Katy Perry, but it, it got my, uh, my, my my eye because because it's just like biblical. It has some cross pollination. This mu music mu musicologist he was showing uh, the you know the thing that they took her to court. Toot, 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 toot. I mean the, the something, and he and he saying, okay, I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put this thing. And you hear it? Oh no, no! I'm sorry. This is from the this is back from the 18th century. And then he puts another one. Did, did, did. Oh no! This is I'm sorry. This is from something else. And then he goes. Did, did. No, I'm sorry. This is from Godzilla. And and, and then did, did. Oh, this is from Moses coming down from from from, from with the Ten Commandments. So that thing has been used time and time again by musicians. And uh -huh. now this Christian rapper wants to copyright it. And and, right. and and when and, and when I was listening to this, I said, "This is the same the same argument people put forward regarding uh, Israelite religion copying somebody else. You cannot do that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. See that? I guess that's the point that I'm getting at. Is like uh, the sun disc, for example, which it's it's so cool because Isaiah will he'll compare Yahweh to the sun in several passages. Uh, there's a passage I think it's in Isaiah 60 roughly somewhere about there where he says uh, at the new creation, Yahweh will become the sun. Uh, but this, this idea of representing your chief God as the sun was, it was already like mm. a millennia old before Kings like Hezekiah took the symbol. Like it, it was an indigenous part of his culture. Mm. So, so, it, so representing God as the sun is just, um, Again, this is polemical. Again, go, going back to uh, uh, my God is better than your God. Right. Oh. Uh. So, so um, but, but Ben, the, my thing is, I, I have a bone to pick with Finkelstein, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> I mean, maybe... I don't know. I, I, I understood that you don't want to take uh, a, a, maybe my, uh, my position... Because I'm, I'm not an archaeologist, uh, uh, but the thing is that his theory lessens uh, because, uh, like, the Bible uncover is being translated into Spanish, and, and people and I, I, uh -huh. I, I met a pun yesterday. They have made made that book their Bible <laughs> to understand oh, really? the Bible, 
Yeah. And people said the Bible has totally been proven that it's not true. So what you're saying about the seals shows that there are big holes in his in his in, at least there are big holes in his in his and his partner um, on the book uh, arguments. The I mean, that's how I take it. Uh, I wouldn't go that far just because I'm not sure, like in specified format, uh, what types of arguments he's making that you're referring mm -hmm. to. Yeah. But no, 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 no. his his no, school no. of thought, his school of thought, like it's uh, very minimalistic in terms of like how much you can trust the Bible, and it's it's directly opposed to like some very uh, very excellent archaeologists like Elliot Mazar, who's excavating uh, the city of David right now. Uh, she discovered the Hezekiah bull, and she's like, her opinion about the Bible is total opposite. She thinks you can follow it, and it's it's a productive uh, schema to to find local sites. So, uh, mm. in terms of uh, in terms of that, uh, I've read plenty of Finkelstein before, but in terms of uh, what you're talking about, I don't think I'd be probably qualified yeah, 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 to yes, challenge yes. it too ne much. Ne 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 neither am I. But the thing is that, um, uh, like I said. This is like throwing a, a wrench into the machine. <laughs> I mean, right. I, I, at least right. th that's how I see it. That's how I see it. Because, because, because these people who are who are quoting Finkelstein as the one and all said, no, 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 no. Let's, there's still some things that we have to take consider. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I, I see it more so as an apologetic um, tool. Well, anyway, so those are the questions, my friend. We we have finished. Um, awesome. Just one last thing uh, that I like to. So, so when are you finishing your your master thesis? Should be October. End of October is when I'm scheduled to be done. Okay. And, and hoping that you pass. When when will graduation take place? Um, unclear on that right now, but mm -hmm. uh, I might not be in the. I might not even be in the country for it. So I'd just say in, in the preceding months after that is when I should be getting my degree. It's uh, it's it's been very strange in Germany. They're not nearly as as uh, quick with like grading things and, and mm -hmm. the administration and everything as as I'm used to in America. Yes, here is as well very quickly uh, they follow. Like I told you before, um, before we started recording, they follow the English. So you you do your exam, and very quickly you know if you pass or not. <laughs> Right, right. And Here look, I have to wait like two months. Yeah. And, and looking at life beyond master degree, uh, um, I mean, um, thinking PhD, you have to look for a place to do it, or you're thinking about staying in Germany to do it, or I'll probably come back to Germany for it. They're just yeah. they're just too nice to uh, scholars and students for for me not to do that in yes. terms of just pure finances. Oh, in terms of quality of education, I want to go to Deutschland. <laughs> well, Australia, Australia Seriously. actually, actually, Australia has paid my my, my studies. That's why I can study. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm like you. I mean, uh, I don't pay. They they don't pay my upkeep, but uh, but they pay my study. So, uh, pe pe right. people are amazed. I'm amazed. I mean, uh, my course, the the, the the one I'm doing is. Uh, uh, I have it, I actually, I have it here because before before talking to you, I was do, I was doing my class. Contemporary approaches to biblical studies. That's two thousand four hundred dollars in the class, the whole class. So, um, to pay that, that that that, <laughs> that would be impossible. Um, yeah. uh, it will be very hard. It will be very hard. So, uh, a German, but so the government pays. And <laughs> in, in, in Germany, I know that they're very generous as well. So, so I'm glad to have talked to you, Ben. Uh, I, I hope that uh, when you finish, uh, doors open for you. And uh, and thank you for your time. What time is it right yeah, now thanks. in Germany? In Germany, what time is it? It is two thirty-five. Here is uh, two thirty-five in the afternoon, thir uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. Today, uh, right now, it's ten thirty-five here in Australia p.m. Uh, uh, in Wednesday as well. In Wednesday as well. So, so thank you very much. All right. So thank well, you very much. I hope to um, to catch up with you some other time and, and, and talk about all, all, all the issues. I li like to hear more about the seals because uh, um, I couldn't understand when when I read you and when I when, but now that you explain it and, and let me encourage you, your explanation has has really helped me. I mean, we we are at the same um, almost at the same. Well, you're finishing. I'm I'm halfway finishing, 
uh, same level of study. And, and I couldn't understand when, when Matthias told me about the, the seals and the seals. And we didn't talk about the seraphim, actually. But, <laughs> but that'll be, an, uh, yeah. uh, that'll be an, in another occasion. All right, thank you sure. very much. All right, yeah. Have a good night. You too. You too. Have a good day. Bye-bye.